Okay. Fingers crossed this time. I am going to refresh it and we will just be patient because normally we're just not patient. Somebody wants to know how do you make iced tea and you know I have a recipe for it. All right, we're live. Okay, I'm gonna wait um, until we get a few people. It's kind of weird, like I see myself, but it hasn't quite started. So I'm just going to wait and uh, I see one eyeball. Um, normally what happens is I get in here and I'm in a big hurry to get going and I get going and half the people can't find it. So this time what we're trying to do is we're trying to start up a little bit early, give people a chance to catch up. And I have a couple of people from my group that are actually helping. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to um, get get people in there. Okay, so what I would really like is some comments because what I'm seeing is a still screen. So if you can hear me um, and if you can see this, if you will post a comment, that will be super helpful so that we know it's actually working. Um, all right, there. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give, hello, Tammy, how are you? Okay, so we're gonna give, hey, Amy, you found me. So I'm hoping that Kathy, Kathy Jacoby was gonna help and she was gonna post this link. Um, so I'm hoping she's done that so that people can find it. And, um, you know, I don't always say, hey, Nandita, you're back, you're back home uh, from, the, from India, which is it's hard to say which one home is when you live in India um, and you live here. Um, but I'm gonna get started in just a few minutes. I'm just gonna give people, you can see me and hear me, Go, you, you guys, were you here last time when I was sideways? It was quite ridiculous. Uh, I'm amazed anybody watched it. So I was actually really happy. And Kathy posted it to the Facebook group. Kathy, thank you so much for doing that. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to give people a little time to catch up. Um, here is my book. My book, by the way, guys, was a bestseller on the Wall Street Journal's list of nonfiction books. So I was number four, which is kind of surprising to me. But it was, and it's thanks to you guys um, going out and buying it. The recipes I'm cooking today are all um, in this book. So we're going to make um, an Indian spiced rice today. And uh, most of you might not even know how it's pronounced. And it's actually pronounced masale bhat. Masale means spiced. Bhat in Marathi means rice. And um, so that's what we're going to, uh, this is what we're going to be. And somebody made the chicken biryani. Hey, Sherlyn, you're probably working, but I'm glad you joined for a minute. Y'all, Sherlyn has a, bro has a blog. Um, Sherlyn, tell them, tell them the name of your blog so that you can, um, that people can find you. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go ahead and start these things on saute to get them hot and meanwhile I'll give you an explanation of what we're doing. So I'm a big fan of dump and cook, okay? Most of us have too much going on and we can't really, you know, find a whole bunch of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a tomato coconut soup. Um, then I'm going to show you how to make a rice with a bunch of spices and vegetables. It's really, really yummy. Uh, those two actually go together as a dish. Then while those are cooking, I'm going to do this a little bit backwards. I'm going to show you the spice mix that you actually need to make in order to go into that rice. Okay, so while those two things are cooking, I'll show you the spice mix. It's, it's called Gora Masala. It's also in your cookbook, G-O-D-A, Gora Masala. Um, and then while that's happening, actually, uh, I'm going to throw in a little bonus. I'm going to show you how to make a raw cabbage salad um, that doesn't require cooking. Roger, don't mess with the camera. My husband is like, his fingers are itching to do something. And I'm like, don't touch that. Don't touch that. It's actually working for a change. Hey, Martin, how are you? Gail is here. I'm so glad. Okay, so the recipe. Now, you, here's what you guys need to do. You need to follow the recipe. You don't need to do what Irvishi does, which is mad woman cooking and just throwing things in. It might work. It might not. You might get there eventually. But the first time, just follow the recipe. Okay, now I cook by feel a lot. And so I'm just going to do this. Now, for those of you who are joining for the first time, this is kind of messy. Sorry, I was cooking earlier. This is called a masala dabba. And every Indian household has one. There's a link to it on my blog. And in mine uh, are a bunch of spices. I have salt. I have mustard seeds, cumin seeds, cayenne pepper, turmeric. I use a cumin coriander powder quite frequently, so that's in here. And then here's a little bit of a garam masala. Now the masala I'm going to use for the rice, the spice mix I'm using for the rice is not actually in there, but I'll show you how to make it. Okay. So, um, hi Tamara, how are you? And my, uh, my husband says he can hear. That's Roger. That's my husband talking on there, by the way. Um, okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a dump and cook. We're making a tomato coconut soup. Now the recipe calls for fresh tomatoes. I wanted to show you that you can actually do it with canned. So I don't know how your house is, but in my house, these are pantry staples okay I've got a tomato um, can of tomatoes that I'm dumping into my mini I have a can of coconut milk generic coconut milk so I'm not actually endorsing a particular brand today so I'm just gonna dump the coconut milk in here 
Okay, so I have tomatoes in there. I have coconut milk. And then this is the really, hey Lorraine, this is really, really easy to do, when you, especially when your hands are swollen or if you're having trouble standing up. You don't even really need to cut it that much. Because why? Because everything is going to get pureed in. So I should mention that I am actually not a fan of cooking coconut milk in the pressure cooker. I find that it separates, except when you're making a soup like this. Because what's going to happen is you're going to whip the heck out of it afterwards. And everything is going to get homogenized. So all of it's going to be nicely mixed in. Full fat, absolutely. Absolutely full fat. Do not use anything except full fat if you're if you're making this soup. Okay. So um, my coriander cumin is 50/50, and so I just put in you know a tablespoon of each, and I just kind of grind grind it. Hey, Lori, how are you? Tomatoes, um, full fat coconut milk. I'm dumping in some onion. Okay, and then I'm gonna dump in some whole garlic because I'm too lazy to chop it. I'm dumping in some ginger. And by the way, guys, I do not peel my ginger. I just don't. It's a pain. It's not necessary. You can't really tell it's in there. And then I am dumping in some cilantro into my soup. Okay, so I've put in coconut. I've put in, uh, sorry, tomato, coconut, onion, ginger, garlic. You want a little sweetness in the soup. Okay, Georgia, you found me and I'm not sideways. Georgia's super disappointed that I'm not sideways. I know this. Okay, this is agave, uh, but you can use honey, you can use Splenda, you can use sugar, you can use whatever. We're just going to give it a little bit of a zip in there. And now the masala dabba sorcery is going to start. So I'm just going to do this by feel. I'm putting in a little bit of salt. This is kind of sideways. Like I feel like I'm a little bit sideways here, but as long as you can see, does it have to be sweet onion? No, uh, bud, it doesn't. Um, I have to tell you, I'm a very casual cook. So I use whatever onion I have lying around. Um, and really by the time you're done with the soup, there's so much flavor. You're not going to know what kind of onion it was. So it doesn't really matter. So I happen to have red onions. I used it. Sometimes I use white. Sometimes I use yellow. I'm putting in a little bit of cayenne pepper. Um, you can vary this as you like. So look guys, we're ready ready to cook this. As I turn this, um, now I don't remember how much time I've said in the cookbook, but this looks like a five minute recipe to me. So I'm going to give it about five minutes. So I'm going to hit a pressure cook. I'm going to clean off the turmeric. Hope you guys didn't see me be messy. And um, I'm going to give this five minutes. So this is my mini. Uh, I dumped it in my mini and I'm just, um, it's on pressure cook. It's going to take care of itself. So look, in that time, we've started the soup. And um, it is a very nice spice tin, Nikki. I absolutely love um, that spice tin. So now this is coming to pressure, okay? In the meantime, I very smartly, for a change, turned on this thing so that it's already hot. You see how it says already hot? So let me clean up this mess. I'm trying really, really hard to clean up after myself because otherwise, after the show is finished, it looks like a tornado hit this place. So I'm really trying. See, look at me. This is me putting my stuff away. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make rice. So... Oh, Roger, Roger, Roger. I forgot, I forgot vegetables. So <laughs> we're gonna have to do it that way. Roger, Ooh, I need vegetables. <laughs> My poor husband, honey, they're in the bottom. Uh, there's a, a package of mixed frozen vegetables. All right, so um, this is ridiculous, but I'm doing this. Okay, here's some ghee. Um, so, Sound is great. The mini does not self-seal. So the only ones, thank you, sweetheart. The only one that does self-seal is actually the Ultra. Um, and that's actually quite handy. Um, so here's, here's this um, Instant Pot. I'm going to make the, uh, this is my, uh, this is my uh, dual. I'm going to make the spiced rice, the masale bhat on this, okay? So I'm dumping in some ghee. And while this gets hot, my dog wants to see what's going on. So she's come to investigate. But you know, puppies are allowed, right? When this gets hot, I'm going to take in and put in, oh, a few little mustard seeds, okay? And I'm going to put in a few little cumin seeds. Now, let me explain why I'm doing that. So a lot of times, I don't actually believe in browning food ahead of time. I feel like it dries out the food. Uh, you're working against yourself in a pressure cooker. You're going to add water afterwards. Um, yeah, nobody needs veggies, right? Um, so in the mini, uh, so um, uh, Karen, I can go through what I'm making in the mini. I'm making a tomato coconut soup. I put in a can of tomatoes, a can of full-fat coconut milk, handful of um, chopped red onion, uh, five or six garlic cloves, um, about that much ginger, a fourth of a cup of cilantro, and then I put in some turmeric because, you know, it's got heart uh, healthy and infl inflammatory pro um, help properties. Uh, I put in some uh, salt and I put in some chili powder and that's really all I've done and we're giving it five minutes under pressure. Meanwhile, I'm flavoring the oil. 
So you know how in Chinese cooking, you might take oil and then you'll put some ginger and garlic and that oil has that really nice flavor. In Indian cooking, you do that with um, mustard seeds and cumin seeds. Not only does it flavor the oil, but actually the taste of those fried mustard seeds and cumin seeds is quite different. So we're going to do that. That's in there. And um, I'm trying to answer... Um, Rick, it is, you know, this is the thing I love about live is uh, many of the names on here I recognize. And like, I know people's stories. Like I can tell you what Georgia was doing last Friday uh, when we were doing this show and she was having to watch Sideways. She was sitting there waiting for her husband who was um, out helping at a storm and I was her amusement. And this is why she wasn't terrified. So like, it's, I love the live shows just because I get a chance to connect with people that I've seen their comments and actually not had a chance to interact with. Meanwhile, this is probably entirely burnt while I've been chittering, chattering with you, uh, but that's fine. So here, I'm going to show you how to make the spice mix. This is called Gorda Masala. It's a very, very typical Maharashtrian spice. And so we're going to put in whatever the recipe tells you to. Keep in mind, I'm doing this by feel. And then I don't like raw turmeric. So I always cook my turmeric a little bit. I feel like it flavors um, a little bit better. And raw turmeric has a particular taste that doesn't work for me. So I'm just... You know, next time, we were actually, Roger and I were trying to get the um, camera from above live. And every time we do this live thing, we do something that messes it up. So this time we were like, please, don't mess it up. Okay, we've got ghee in here. We've got cumin seeds. We've got mustard seeds. I put in some of this gorda masala that I'm going to show you how to make. I'm going to put in some peanuts because peanuts and rice is a delightful combination. So I'm putting in that. And um, Sally's here. Guys, if you like the recipe book and you like how it turned out, Sally's part of the people that you need to thank for how that cookbook turned out. She was part of the um, super talented team that really helped me uh, clean up all of my uh, little, you know, recipes. In this lovely bag, which I'm sure Food Network always has their stuff in plastic bags, um, we have frozen vegetables. And so put, put whatever you want. The only thing I would say is don't put something like um, broccoli or something that's, you know, odorous a little bit, okay? So I have here mixed vegetables. Um, it's not unusual to put um, peppers, like green peppers, you know? Um, it's not unusual to put cabbage. So you just put whatever your family will eat, okay? These things are home cooking. There's not a particular way in which you have to do it. I'm going to put in the rice, which I used my hands. Yes, I did. And then I'm going to throw in a little bit of salt. Is everybody with me? Oh, Holly loves the book. Holly, thank you. I love you for saying that. And I was smart. I had hot water in my Yeti. See, I'm getting a little bit smarter. Like, at least I have my stuff together. Even though I can't open the Yeti, that's a whole different issue. Okay, now here's the thing. I have very, very little rice in this big pot, okay? We don't eat a whole lot, and I didn't want leftovers. So people always say, how much water does it take to come to pressure? The issue isn't how much it's necessarily going to take to come to pressure. A fourth of a cup, whether it's from um, vegetables or, uh, you know, water added in works. When you're making so little rice, what you want to do, and forgive me as I get distracted for a minute, you want to push it down so that the rice is not sticking up over the water and it's well covered. I get a lot of people say, you know, my rice was kind of crunchy. I'm not really sure what happened. I know what happened. You didn't push it in far enough is what happened. And that'll, that'll get you in trouble. So now we have this. We're going to, every one of these is different. So forgive me while I figure out how this goes. So this is a duo. I'm going to press um, manual on here and I am going to give it four minutes. Okay. Do, 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 do. Four minutes and it's going to come on. So for those of you who are just joining, tomato, coconut soup happening in here. Uh, tomatoes, coconut milk, uh, aromatics like onions, garlic, ginger. Oh, look. Um, it's coming on. Um, onions, garlic, ginger, uh, turmeric, cayenne pepper, salt. That's it. In this one, we have a little bit of ghee. We have um, cumin seeds and uh, mustard seeds. And then I put in some peanuts because rice and peanuts is a wonderful combination. I put in a special masala that I'm going to show you how to make. And I put in rice, salt, and water. That's it. So this rice and this tomato soup are a very, very classic combination. So masale bhat, and it's called uh, tomato sar. I make it a little bit differently uh, just to make it easy. I've cut out a step in there. Um, but it's, this is a very, very classic combination. And by the way, if you're going to eat this, you have to eat it with lots of ghee on top. That rice really needs a lot of ghee. So I'm going to check, and I'm right side up, Carol. I know. Uh, this is a little bit ridiculous that I, we haven't messed up any, anything yet, and I'm probably just jinxing us right now. So I'm going to shut up about that. Okay, look. This is me cleaning up after myself. I'm a big girl. Okay, now, 
This could go cattywampus. So we'll just have to see what happens here. This is a new little thing. And ha ha ha, I did not blow up the house yet. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to make um, a masala, a, a, a gora masala it's called, okay? Now, if you have not watched the spice video, you really should. It shows you, there's a cooking with spices video. <clears throat> And it tells you the various ways in which Indians use spices. So we will use a spice hole. <coughs> we will use it roasted. We will use it roasted in oil or we will dry roast it. Okay. And that's a whole seed. Now, once you have um, done that with the seed, then you can grind it and you can use it by itself or you can grind it and you can mix it with other things. So a seed can be used just in a variety of ways. Okay. And I'm going to let this come up to hot and I'm going to answer some questions. Hey, Jenny. Jenny, y'all, is a chef. She, her um, site is called Pastry Chef Online, I think. Jenny, give them the URL so they know. Hey, Joe's watching and Joe's making shawarma too. Uh, how much rice? So, oh, see, I always do this. I, I have so many different pots. I forget. This one sealed. That one didn't. I have to adjust it. Um, I used half a cup just because I didn't want a whole lot left over, but you should follow the recipe. So the recipe is for a whole cup. You should probably follow that one and it'll be fine. Um, so this is heating up and now I'm going to bring over my spices and explain what spices I have here. So now for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a huge, huge proponent of whole spices. Yes, you could go out and buy a garam masala um, jar. Not only will it be $8, that's all you have is you have garam masala. Instead, if you go and buy whole spices, you can make a lot of things. You can make a Punjabi garam masala. You can make a, you can make a shawarma mix. You can make a Ethiopian berberry. You can make this gora masala that I'm about to show you. So, and those spices last longer. So I am really going to advocate that you do um, whole spices. Now in this, we have a huge variety of spices going in. We're going to have coriander seeds. We're going to have cumin seeds. We have cinnamon. We have cloves. We have red pepper. We have black pepper. And then we have two ingredients that you have not seen me use in the, um, in the uh, garam masala before. One of them is unsweetened flaked coconut. And the other one is sesame seeds. Now, I just posted a chutney recipe uh, this sometime this week that used both of these ingredients. So you should go check it out in any case. So if you buy these whole spices, you're, you're going to be able to do a lot of things with it. Okay, so do I use unsalted peanuts? I do. Um, uh, I do use unsalted peanuts, Linda, just because um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Again, I'm a very casual cook. It depends what I have in the pantry. I need peanuts. Sometimes I'll use the Spanish red peanuts. Sometimes I'll use... Um, uh, unsalted peanuts. The only thing I would recommend is you don't use like those honey roasted peanuts. That would be a bit odd in a savory dish. But other than that, you should do it. Okay, now in the interest of time, I am going to um, not follow the recipe. The reason I'm not following the recipe is because things cook at different speeds and without the experience, you're not going to know when to add the next thing. So the way I have you making it is you're going to roast things in three batches and until you get the hang of it, just do that. However, we're MacGyvering as usual. I just put in the um, coconut and I'm going to saute that coconut. You've got to watch this stuff. Now, let me tell you something. If in doubt, undercook, okay? You, you won't go too terribly wrong with undercooking, but if it's burned, it's not salvageable. When the coconut is a little bit brown, I'm putting in cumin, I'm putting cloves, I'm putting in cilantro, and my... What was that? That was cinnamon. Ooh, there goes lots of red peppers and there's going in some red, red chilies. So let me see if I can remember. Cumin, coriander, cloves, peppers, cinnamon, coconut, and red chili peppers. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my very toasty little cinnamon, uh, sesame seeds, okay? Let me, where can we find the recipes? So now you can find the recipes in two places. One of them, is let me lean over and try not to catch fire one of them is this it's an instant pot cookbook that's been uh, authorized by the instant pot company uh, you can buy that on amazon but you can also find many many recipes on my blog and my blog is twosleevers.com so just go to the blog and you'll be able to find it so meanwhile i'm toasting this i don't know how much you can see um, these are toasty. I do a lot of this by smell and by looking at it, okay? So I can see that, you know, things are not yet burnt. Um, oh, smell. You know, you guys, we need smell-o-vision. This thing smells so amazing. 
This rice is coming up to pressure. And now here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take this off and I'm going to put it in a plate. Now this is a very, very important thing that I do not want you to rush. You do not want to grind this hot, okay? There's oil in here, there's steam in here, there's, um, there's seeds in here generating more and more steam. This thing is continuing to cook. If you try to put it in the grinder right now, what's going to happen is all that steam is going to make one big lump of paste, and that is not what you want. You want a beautiful, powdery finish. So, got a messy, guys. Yeah, this is the thing, right, about doing this live. Like, it's not Food Network where somebody comes and cleans up after me. It's just me, and you watch the whole mess. So I hope you guys are doing okay. Okay, so I know the stove is on. Um, here's the spice mix, and I'm just going to dump it over here. And you miss the name of the cookbook, just look for Indian Instant Pot Cookbook on Amazon, and um, it should be the first one that pops up. And you'll recognize it, and you'll see my name. There's only one Urvashi Patri on Google, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay, I have my spice mix. I'm going to set it aside. And now, let me not catch on fire as I do this. I'm going to show you how to make something that you might not realize um, we do in Indian cooking, okay? So we actually have a lot of raw salads, um, but we don't eat salads the way you guys do. In fact, we had some exchange students come into um, um, our city when I was really, really young. So I was like eight years old, and this was like 42 years old ago, right? So it was a long time ago. So we had some exchange students come in, and they would just chop up these raw vegetables and put them on a plate. And we were like, what is that? Did somebody forget to cook it? Like, what is going on? We're not used to just seeing like raw veggies in a salad the way we would have it. We make things with raw veggies, though. And so this is a really easy hack. I'm going to take a bag of shredded coleslaw mix. And again, I'm doing this by feel. This recipe, the cabbage peanut slaw, is on the website, twosleevers.com. And uh, so it's right here. And um, you can relate to the way I cook. It's real. By golly, it's real. It's huge, messy real. Okay, now what I'm going to do in here is I have this. I have some peanuts. See those peanuts that I put into the, um, the rice? It's very much those peanuts. I've kind of ground them a little bit. I'm going to dump that in here. And then I'm going to put some tomatoes. So now here's the thing when we make these sour salads. There's one of three ways in which we sour a salad just a tad, okay? One way is that we use lime or lemon juice. So you make a salad, you squeeze some lime or lemon juice on it, and it marinates in that. The second way in which we do it is we put tomatoes to add a little bit of sourness. These sour things cook the vegetables a little bit raw, okay? So it's like tenderizing a vegetable. It's like making ceviche, right? You know how um, lime juice cooks the seafood? We're kind of doing a little bit of that. We're tenderizing the vegetable a little bit. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to chop a tomato. It's a little noisy, but hey, it is what it is. I'm going to dump this tomato. So this Kuhn Raikon, I have a link for it on my website. It's very, very good for people who have um, mobility issues, which I do. And then I'm going to try to not cut myself here. So basically I have cabbage, I have peanuts, I have tomatoes. Now I'm going to put in some chopped cilantro in here. I'm going to dump this in here again. And let us run our handy dandy little chopper. The more the more times you pull on this, the more, um, yes, cooking would be a lot more fun if somebody was cleaning up after me. The more times you pull on this, the finer a chop you get, but we're not going to fuss with it too much. Um, it's a little bit rougher than I would like, but it's going to have to do. Does it bother you guys that I use my hands? I know that there's, um, it's completely verboten on cooking shows, right? But I just, it's easier for me to guesstimate how much is going on. So I hope you guys don't mind. All right, so I've just chopped in tomatoes. I have um, cilantro in there. And I am um, going to show you how to make something which is called a tarka. Now I have a cute little thing, but you don't have to have a cute little thing. You just have to have something that is heat proof. Now, remember earlier when I told you that what we do often is that we flavor oil with, cu uh, with um, cumin or with mustard seeds or with turmeric? This procedure is called a tarka. 
when you read an Indian recipe and it asks you to temper, we're not talking about taking a hot liquid, mixing it with something and putting it back. And you know how we would consider tempering in most Western countries? That's not what Indians are talking about. When we're talking about tempering, we're using the same word, but we're using it entirely differently. So this thing is called a tadka, T-A-D-K-A. It's called Fordni in Marathi, P-H-O-D-N-I. It's called Vaghar in Gujarati. So like every, um, and some of the uh, other Indians on here who are watching, um, if you know, um, different words for it. Um, let me know. Hands do work best because you can squish it a little bit and get some of the flavor out. So here's what I'm doing. I'm heating this little pan and I'm going to get a little bit of oil going in here. Actually, I'm going to take it off here because the burner is too big and I don't want to catch fire. So I've put in, I don't know, tablespoon tablespoon of oil is what we have in there. So that's going on. By the way, guys, while we were doing this, the tomato soup is done and um, the rice is done. That's how fast it cooks. So, you know, dinner, getting dinner on the table quickly is not that big a deal. Okay, while this is happening, I'm out of salt, but I'm going to put some in there. And I'm going to do the same procedure that I had before. Let me get this guy. So I have in here, for those of you who are joining, I have raw cabbage, like I took a cabbage slaw. I took peanuts, ground peanuts. Uh, I chopped in some tomatoes, and I chopped in some cilantro. Meanwhile, this is heating. I'm going to put in one to see if it pops to the top. And it's not popping to the top as fast as I would like. And I'm an impatient person, so we're gonna turn it up. Meanwhile, I will see if I can answer questions. Lynn, what is it that you need in your life besides shawarma? Lynn is like a shawarma freak, y'all. She makes uh, she makes shawarma like all the time. She makes, I think, a triple batch of the spice uh, and makes a chicken shawarma. She makes the shawarma rice. Um, so I'm wondering now what new thing it is that Lynn can't live without. All right, so I'm gonna put in some cumin. I'm going to put in some coriander. Listen, can you hear it popping? And I'm putting in some turmeric. Okay, that's all. Cumin, um, mustard seeds, coriander. Now watch this. This is a hot flavored oil. This is not like anything we make in this country. Okay, it's a hot flavored oil. I'm dumping it in there. I'm going to mix it. And then because I'm a cheapskate, I'm going to get the last bit of oil because that's where all the good taste is at. And then, wow, wrong way. I'm going to move that and I'm mixing this. And give me half a second to mix this properly and I will show you what it is going to look like. Okay, everybody doing okay so far? So we've got this wonderful salad now. I've got some souring in with tomatoes. I could have used yogurt. I could have used um, lime juice. I could have used lemon juice, but I didn't. I used tomato because that's what I had lying around. Here's my salad, and I'm going to hold this for a minute, okay? So I'm going to show you everything when it's finished cooking, but right now, in this time, which is, oh, about 20 minutes, we've made soup, we've made rice, we've made a salad, and we have the garam masala sitting out there. Let me move this before I break something. And what I did was I actually made the soup ahead of time. Okay, this is not hot. I can move it. My husband is like really good at logistics and so he tries out all these different things that I can use without burning myself because last time we used a, a convection thing, it was super noisy and loud and we burnt ourselves. So this time we have a different pot going on. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out the tomato soup that I made earlier. I'm going to show you how to finish it up, okay? Meanwhile, if you have questions, this is a good time to ask and I'll check as soon as I turn around. Oh yeah. Okay, any questions? The recipe for the shawarma, um, yeah, she's, she's got, Lynn, Lynn is the expert on the shawarma recipe. She could probably do it in her sleep. Okay, if you follow me, I use my Instant Pot a lot. I use my Kuhn Raikon chopper a lot. I use an immersion blender a lot, and I use the spice mixer a lot. And I have links to all of those on the website. But let me show you what I have before I get at it. So I had put in tomatoes, cu um, onions, uh, ginger, garlic. I put in um, tomato sauce. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not tomato sauce. Not tomato sauce. Coconut milk. And I put in uh, some spices. This luscious little thing is what we get out of it. So let me hold it up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the pot a bit and I'm going to immersion blend it. Yum. Okay. Okay, I have a delicious looking soup. Now you can make this pureed if you want, like more pureed if you want, or you could not. 
okay? Um, it's up to you how, what consistency your family prefers. But literally, what's going to happen after the soup is done in that pot, you're going to take it out, you're going to blend it like I did, you're going to pour it, and if I were you, I'd put a little cream in it, just because, you know, cream, why not? Um, ooh, I made such a mess. Okay, let me put this aside for now. And we have one last thing to do. That one last thing is I'm going to show you how to grind that Gorda Masala. Before I do that, let me check in on you guys. Um, Costco bowl? Um, no, Amazon bowl. I looked for it for popcorn. This was at a time when we were still eating popcorn. And so there are these little... Does Costco have those? I would like those actually from Costco because these are plastic ones, which actually is good because I can't hold heavy things sometimes when I... I have rheumatoid arthritis. And so I have a flare-up sometimes and I can't hold heavy stuff. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. This thing is relatively cool, okay? This is a lot. This is a lot. You do not want to dump all of it in here, otherwise you're going to have a mess. So I basically use a coffee grinder and I save it just to do this. I don't do anything else in there. You definitely don't want uh, masala flavored coffee. So you've watched this before, I know most of you. It's in here. I'm going to press it down and then I'm going to shake it. And there's a reason for that is because you don't want the spices to get trapped under the blade, okay? Okay. And then turn it around and thump it. That's a scientific term for what you have to do. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so I have a little bit. This is a nice powder. I'm not going to make all of it because you get the idea. But essentially, do this in batches, and you will have the best gora masala. Now, you ask me, how can I use this? Well, let me count the ways. You could make that rice that I just told you about. You could... Um, put this in dal. I have a chana dal fry recipe. You could put some of this. Now when Maharashtrians make dal, they use this gora masala. Uh, Maharashtrians, by the way, Maharashtra is a state. Uh, it is a state in which Bombay is. Uh, my father is from there. My mother was Punjabi. So I cook both kinds of food. Um, but when we cook, we use a lot of peanuts. We use a lot of um, coconut. And then we use a lot of sugar, actually. It's called jaggery. It's like an unrefined sugar. Closest thing we would have here, I would say, is palm sugar. Um, and then we use peanuts a lot. So again, coastal. It's a coastal area, so we have a lot of coastal food. Okay, so I'm not mixing all of it, but you can see from before, I have this gora masala. Okay, you saw how long it took me to put all that together. In the time we've been here, we've made tomato soup, we've made rice, we've made this gora masala, and we've made a salad. So... Let me, if you will indulge me for half a second, I am going to very carefully push these things aside and then I'm going to lay out the food we made so that you can see your dinner. I'm going to try to not tip the tomato sauce bowl, the tomato soup bowl. Here's some luscious tomato soup. Um, we, it's got tomato, coconut, onion, ginger, garlic, and some spices. This thing, I can't even tell you what, what all it's got in it. It's got a bunch of different spices, recipes in the cookbook, and it's on the website. Here's what the rice is going to look like. When you're done with that rice, Lynn, you need to try this, because if you like the shawarma rice, and if Joe's watching, you guys need to try this, because this has a very different spice in it. And by the way, you can make this vegan, obviously. This whole dinner could be made vegan with just one swap, and that one swap is don't use ghee, use coconut oil, or use um, just regular, regular cooking oil. So here's the rice. What you would do is you would give everybody a little bit of rice. You would them a bowl of the soup. I have, I have masala in my, on my hands, so I'm sorry about that. Um, and then you would serve them this cabbage salad. And there's dinner. And that took us about half an hour to put together. And as you see, these things are done. So I could have opened these and done these at any time. Okay, so half an hour and here we are. We are all done. And uh, if you have any questions, there's a six second delay. So if you have questions, you need to ask those right now. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you the book one last time. The blog, by the way, it's gonna be noisy. The blog is twosleevers.com. And uh, I have a Facebook group uh, under Two Sleevers. Everybody in there is a foodie. They're all very smart uh, men and women. They know how to cook. So if you're looking for a little bit of an advanced um, group for IP cooking, they're good. But they're really good about answering questions from everyday uh, you know, people who are starting out. So I would urge you to check out the group and the Facebook page. Um, I do one of these. I try to do one of these every Friday night. This is the book, Indian Instant Pot Cookbook. It's on Amazon. And the blog is twosleevers.com. And for those of you who are wondering how to pronounce my name. It's pronounced Urvishi. 
uh, which rhymes with Hershey. It is not Urvashi. Uh, it's Urvashi. And my last name is Pitre, which rhymes with Stingray. So Hershey Stingray is a good way to remember my name. Anyway, here's the book. I'm Urvashi from Two Sleevers. I am looking to see um, if you have any other questions. And if you don't, then we are all done. Uh, I thank you for spending a portion of your Friday night with me. And uh, if you come into my group and tell me what you'd like to see next, um, we, we are certainly taking requests. And we will do another show Friday. Thank you guys very much for watching.